So you might have noticed a certain type of game that's been getting a lot of attention lately. They're rather vaguely grouped together under the label social deduction. But there is one thing that they all seem to have in common. Lying. More specifically, in these games, lying is an intended and core part of play, and being good at lying is part of what it means to be a good player. One question. Isn't lying wrong? Of course, lying can be good, or at least excusable, if it's being used to bring about something good, or to prevent an even bigger harm. But if you're just lying for personal gain or enjoyment, like to win a game, that's wrong, right? Are games like Among Us getting players to commit immoral acts? On the one hand, playing these games doesn't feel wrong. And it's important to remember that deception is an important part of many, many, many games, and most of those seem perfectly acceptable. On the other hand, our feelings and intuitions are not always the best guide for deciding what's right and wrong. And if lying in games is okay, we can still ask why? What's so special about games that they make bad behavior good? Here are a few possible answers. The first, and perhaps most common, says that the rules of these games make lying okay. Lying is either allowed or required by the rules, so it's okay. But this isn't a great answer, since rules don't actually determine what is morally right or wrong. So that won't do. Next, you could say, that's just how everyone plays. Everyone knows you're supposed to lie, and everyone thinks it's okay, so it's okay. But this isn't a great answer either. It's just an appeal to a social convention, and that's not a reliable guide when it comes to questions of morality. Well, the philosopher Thomas Carson has an interesting solution. He argues that lying in games isn't really lying at all, because lying can only exist in situations where you're morally obliged to tell the truth. For example, no one accuses actors of lying because acting is not a context where there is a moral obligation to tell the truth. Same thing goes for games. Okay, but that argument only seems to apply to lying if by lying you just mean saying things that aren't true. However, what we're really concerned about is deception, and lying is just one way that you can deceive someone. Deception is much broader than just saying something that isn't true. Deception is anything done with the intent to make someone have worse beliefs. And you can do that by telling the truth or not saying anything at all. So Carson's solution is not as general as we need it to be. Fritz Alhoff is another philosopher with an interesting take on this issue. As he argues, rather than being universal, morality is role-based. Lawyers, for example, are allowed to defend people they know to be guilty and discredit truthful sources of information. That's their role, and it gives them different moral allowances. And these allowances aren't justified solely by rules or social conventions. They have moral force, because all rational actors should endorse them. Similarly, social deduction games are designed around deception as a core mechanic, and so they are made vastly better when players engage in skillful deception. So players should endorse the use of deception, even if they end up on the receiving end, because that's what makes the game fun for everyone and it would be irrational to do otherwise. Just one more thing. So let's say you're playing Among Us and someone accuses you of lying. What do you do? Well, what most people do is they appeal to their credibility. This is no problem if you're telling the truth, because even if no one believes you, circumstances will eventually vindicate you, and your credibility will be restored. But. If you're doing it to get away with some act of deception, there's a gamble involved. If your deception is revealed, then you'll damage your source of credibility. If you draw from the credibility you've built up within the game, then that's the source of credibility you stand to lose. That's a pretty low stakes bet. The stakes get higher when you draw on credibility that extends over multiple games played with the same lobby, or even your general reputation as a player. The riskiest play is when you choose to dip into a well of credibility stored outside the game, based on your personal relationships with the other players, your friends. The question then becomes, are you prepared to deplete that store of trust and credibility just to win a game?